All right, fourth set of batteries. Let's try these. <laughs> has had a new tuning and it seems to be stable now I put some more heat sink compound on instead of the I tried using an adhesive that didn't turn out to be very thermally good I think and it took too long to warm up even with that after I found the crack in the board and fixed it this is the heater board that drives the four heater transistors that generate up to a couple watts I guess a 15 30 volt rail total 15 to minus 15 and uh, so, um, yeah, they have varying voltages now. One's in the negative slightly, so it's doing less than 15. And uh, the others are 3, 3, and the one is still needing about 6 or 7 volts when it warms up, I think, to keep the heat up on that one chip. The SSM2033 chip, of course, has an internal temp sensor, and it just runs a transistor internally that allows you to feed current through the SSM2033, which is up here inside this board, right in there. <laughs> and um, anyway, uh, so they just um, run a heater on top that regulates the temperature of the chip. Uh, as much as possible there. Okay, so uh, this thing has the MIDI Poly mod. Now I just installed it, and I had just a whole lot of fun because my older version, the connector, uh, the wires are flat. The 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 left goes to the left side, right goes to the right side. Coming out of here, my color codes were switched, and I was all confused. I didn't know what to think, so I was having to ask him what's going on, but send some knucklehead <laughs> put on extension wires, and they didn't do a very good job there, and it was obvious this was hacked by a, pretty much an amateur. Then I uh, went back and actually put heat shrink tubing on the uh, joints and stuff and rebuilt this one, which somehow got fried. This comes from the auto damp. may have been never working right. <laughs> they may have been shorting. <laughs> so anyway, this thing should be up to full speed now if one of the connectors wasn't coming in. Now it is. It's still a little scratchy. I just cleaned it and then I put the screws in because it was perfect and now it's scratchy again. Ah, I can't get done. It just won't let me get done. <laughs> I mean, I tried it many times. It was perfect until right now. And <laughs> God. This thing has been an absolute nemesis. Uh, for a bit here, and this switch was also dirty, so it made me think it was failing again after I reinserted the connector that had slipped out on that inner connector. It was just one thing after another. <laughs> oh, I hope we're done. Uh, I'll maybe have to pull out and clean it again. But this is going to drive the um, mono uh, the uh, from the computer. Now I can drive the mono poly, which then will generate control voltages which then will go into this. Do you hear the vibrato? Anyway, yeah, you'll get the picture here when we do a demo on this thing. It is going to be something else here. This thing will have a mad master modulation matrix uh, catch-all grand mix of all of the sources in there. Two, three ADRs, a Tactic K release that can loop. You can turn up a threshold and they begin to loop. And a seven segment envelope generator that is uh, can be looped any stage and up and down. It's just it's just gonna be a really fun thing. Triggers out for those um, stages. And uh, plus individual channel control for the three C V split from the uh, mono poly has one C V out. And then we're gonna split that into three parts in this thing and it'll give you octave shifters and uh, modulation amounts and and you can route that either from the sine wave of a function generator or you can route it from uh, anything you want. It'll have an input that can modulate from stuff on for instance the ARP 2600 that this is made to clamp underneath. So this is going to be a fun fun thing when we get this all done. <laughs> it's going to be just unreal arpeggiation station <laughs> Here, but anyway, um, tuning the mono poly. Tuning the mono poly. I've written various notes in the bottom. 
that was the old notes. Uh, somebody put up a, there's a yellow page up there I'm linking on my website now that uh, has, I think, better instructions. And these things, these things on this, those are just for quick tune. Those are, they do the same thing as VR-102, really. Uh, they offset the, uh, the voltage from the summing node, okay? The summing node is adjusted by VR-102. Those offset the summing node to send it to the SSM 2033's control input. So they really are pretty redundant in what they do, I guess. So they tell you to they tell you to zero it within 0.1 millivolts. <laughs> you can't even do that. I mean, it's like you, sometimes you get lucky, but I mean, it's like plus one, minus one. You're just barely moving it. Plus two, you know, it's just right around millivolts is about as close as you can come. Uh, I can get it to within a millivolt if I really tweak with it, but it does no good because as soon as you barely move one of these two knobs, even an incremental amount, you've just bumped it 10 millivolts. So, come on, people, is that really necessary? 0.1 millivolt. What, what were they thinking? <laughs> Korg engineers, where are you? I would like to ask you what you what you intended against humanity <laughs> when you did that. Anyway, it's it's bizarre. Yeah. So, yeah, they clearly were not um, thinking too much there, or they were, and they were just sadistic. We don't know. But, um, yeah, the uh, MIDI poly is in there now, and we've got it all tuned. And uh, you basically, yeah, uh, you do a, you know, yeah, just follow the yellow instructions, and it seemed to work fine, the page that's all yellow background. And I've got a hard copy of it here. We never need to list it ourselves. If they take that down for some reason, let me know. Okay, so yeah, that's the preface and the try this thing. Now we'll. Um, why is it doing that? I've got a vibrato that I I don't know. You know. The effects isn't doing much, is it? Yeah, it is. Okay. Anyway, I got on the MG1 there. It does more radical things on the. Other settings. Um, let's see. Anything else we need to talk about on this one before we seal it up? Um, oh yeah, they put a wire into the filter, and there is a control there where you can uh, do something. What did he say? Anyway, that's all uh, undocumented, I guess, on his uh, page, as near as I can tell. But it's probably there somewhere. And then there's one into the portamento, and that lets you switch the portamento via a MIDI controller turn it off or on via MIDI control and um, then let's see what else you got these are just bender adjustments he told me and one is um, for the centering and one is for the um, <clears throat> what one is for just the range I guess yeah I can't remember which is which I think uh, I don't know anyway that one's probably the range doesn't say does it uh, C1, I don't know. Try them and see <laughs> if you need to, I guess. Mine is actually a little outside of an octave, and I'll play with it and see what it does. But, yeah, that's the story on this Hummer. Um, oh, yeah, the new cord. Yeah, I tied the ground onto there. Mine just had the two-wire cord. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, the MIDI stuff, just route it away from everything as much as you can there and get it uh, held in place by the cable looms and I haven't tied them all up yet I got one more tie to put on and um, yeah wires floating there a bit but uh, anyway it's all working I think and it's ready to zip up together and put back in and then we can get back to our fun fun project over there <laughs> all right well signing off Oh wait, there's more. I just put it in effects and it didn't slam into unison mode. Ha ha ha, that's, that's nice, I like that. So you can actually, you have to hit unison to make it go in there. Nice. Well that's just peachy Danny. I like that. That's always bothered me, you hit that and instantly transitions you from what you were doing into what they wanted you to be doing. Anyway, <laughs> all right, well. 
Oh, and the back panel looks looks nice with the original nameplate on it. Yeah, anyway, I guess you can see that. <laughs> yeah, this thing's in pretty decent shape. Had a little bit of little bit of dig right in those things I touched up, but otherwise it's in pretty good shape. So, well, it's ready to go into service finally. In service, well, it's been in service, but it hasn't ever stayed in tune real well. <laughs> Hopefully it's in better service and I have to wait a half hour. I think it's down to five minutes to two.